Precious metals ownership can be complicated. How do I find the right partner to buy from? Five to 10% of your assets in physical precious metals or digital is the right play. Whilst much of the world has been in lockdown, financial markets have continued to operate, often with spectacular results. For investors, some of the greatest opportunities of our lifetime will unfold in the coming months and years. This is not a time to shy away from investment ideas. This is the time to embrace them and investigate their potential for our investment portfolios. We've asked experts from across a range of different markets about why we should invest in them and why now. Gold is currently one of the hottest investment themes with a large number of leading institutions and high profile hedge fund managers actively engaging in this space. Central banks, particularly the US Federal Reserve, have gone into overdrive with their money printing activities. Its balance sheet has expanded at an extraordinary pace, with many estimating that it will top 10 trillion by the end of this year. Economic uncertainty, fiscal and monetary accommodation at record levels, and increasing concerns that we may see extreme forms of either inflation and deflation, or both, is a backdrop that should be extremely supportive of gold. But once you've decided to buy gold, you still need to decide what form that should take. ETF, physical, or digital? Many investors want to take ownership of physical gold rather than as a financial asset such as an ETF. I asked Kenneth Lewis, CEO of AppMex and OneGold, about the various forms that bullion can take, and in particular, why digital gold is an exciting alternative, and why now is the time to start thinking about a digital format alongside physical bullion. What is the attraction of physical and digital gold compared to obtaining exposure through instruments such as an ETF, like the GLD? Why physical metal or digital metal? It really comes down to your personal preference. You know, a lot of people love the idea of having it under control, where they have it in their homes, where they're not really tied to the financial markets. And on the digital side, it's just nice knowing it's always backed by physical metal, unlike some ETFs out there in today's world. Once investors have chosen physical gold, there's a variety of forms in which it can be taken. I asked Kenneth to outline some of these formats and summarize their differences. Physical precious metals are generally comprised of a few things. Uh, you have coins, typically sovereign backed. You have rounds and you have bars. Rounds and bars are generally made by private mints. There's generally a premium difference between the two. On the sovereign coin side, you obviously have the federal governments out there that are supporting it, whether that be the US, the Canadians, the UK is presenting some, Perth Mint for Australia. And people tend to migrate to sovereign coins because they know they're gonna be around for years to come. Coins tend to have a higher premium. Bars and rounds tend to be a little bit lower cost. But I like to focus on spreads, right? It's, it's really, what does it cost you to get in and get out and look at that overall cost of ownership and spreads are a good way of doing that. When you look at spreads, you're getting more, more silver and gold for your money when you're buying rounds and bars. Many assets can have different prices depending on the format that an investor chooses, and gold is no different. Kenneth outlined why some forms of gold can demand a premium. Typically, when you're dealing in institutional investment, what you tend to find is you're buying paper, uh, you're buying on a convex. Physical metal needs to be delivered, but that physical metal typically is uh, in 400 ounce form, if it's uh, if I'm talking about uh, gold, or it could be in 1,000 ounce form if I'm talking about uh, silver. They tend to be lower premium bars. They tend to be um, a product that normally is readily available, although in more recent times, that's not the case. The EFP markets have kind of exploded with uh, deltas as high as 50 and $60, um, where, you, where to be able to get physical, it's much more expensive to do so. On the physical products that we sell, coins and bars, they tend to be more expensive to acquire. Uh, typically, it's because of the manufacturing processes. They're still have to obtain metal, as you can imagine. Um, and then, of course, the logistics of moving product to and from. And then, of course, retailers obviously have to have overhead and, and, and have to serve our customers in getting that product to the customers. So you find that premiums uh, tend to be a little bit higher on the physical product that we ship to your home than you might find in, in, in a paper form. But, uh, but you're also finding you're getting a much better product as well. As a consumer, obviously, you can go out and look at a GLD product uh, out there, and they'll say that you can take physical. But you have to take a 400-ounce gold bar, and you're going to find the premiums going to be pretty high. Realistically, for an everyday consumer to take on 400 ounces of gold is really not possible. That's where coins and bars that a product like Atmex or a company like Atmex sells 
it makes it much more obtainable for the end consumer. You can buy it in fractional form, you can buy it uh, one ounce product, which is our most common, and you can go all the way up to kilo products if you want to buy a kilo gold bar, if you so choose. So that's one of the things that's just more, more obtainable for the consumer. Uh, it's also, when you go to liquidate your metal, it's much easier to sell you know, five ounces of gold than trying to find a buyer for a 400 ounce gold bar. Investing in physical gold can also include investing in collectibles. So what are the items with additional historical or scarcity value? Collectibles. Boy, a lot of individuals love to get into precious metals because they see an opportunity for the premium to grow much greater than the metal. And that's typically what you're doing when you're buying a collectible product. It's kind of like art, right? You buy a picture that's been done by an artist, you're hoping it's going to go up in value over time. That's really the kind of basis for a collectible coin as well. You're really banking that that premium is going to increase, even if the precious metals value doesn't change at all. Normally, when you start getting into premiums that are 20 and 30 percent above the metal value, you're really buying something that's more a collectible product. You're, you're banking on its ability to appreciate over time due to the uniqueness or rarity of that product. We sell over 20,000 products on Amex. Um, we're, we've got the largest assortment in the world, we believe, online. We've got coins at $200,000. We've got coins uh, you know, as little as $5. The premium that goes with collectibles tend to make that where it's really in the eye of the beholder. You need to do your research though. When you're buying a collectible product, you want to kind of understand what its auction values might be out there or what it's selling in the open market for today or what other products like it's selling for that might have come out five or 10 or 20 years ago and try to get a feel for whether or not you feel that there's truly appreciation opportunities in that. One of the things I always recommend with serious buyers of collectibles is to focus on products that are in slab condition. Buying products that are in kind of slab form or graded form tend to be a safer bet. You also know you're getting authentic product. One of the challenges with collectibles sometimes is with areas of the world today able to counterfeit products, you want to know that this is real. And, and buying a slab coin where the serialization number can be looked up in the system, you kind of know you're getting the real thing. On the physical side, you want to make sure your product's always insured. All right, you shouldn't be paying for that. The, the, the shipper should always be on the hook for that. They should always be communicating to you through the process, both from when they accept your order to shipping your order uh, to when it's delivered. Uh, they should have a process to deal with claims and disputes. Uh, and you want to know what those processes are before you buy. Throughout history, alchemists have tried to create gold and governments have tried to dilute the gold content of their coinage. Fake products are still a problem today. So how do you avoid getting caught out by the counterfeits? How do you avoid fakes? Man, I'll tell you, I think the most important thing is buying from a reputable dealer. It's easy to fire up a website. Anyone can look um, very big. You also have to even be careful with some of the basics we normally all go to. Let me do a check the reviews. But anyone can go out and put a whole bunch of reviews out there. You want to see whether the retailer is engaged in those reviews. Are they engaging their customers? You want to go to open forums and ask feedback from those who might be live individuals that are going to be able to communicate with you. You want to see how long they've been in business. Companies that have been in business for 20 years are more likely going to be here another 20 years from now. And you want to know that. You want to have that comfort zone. But also very important is how do retailers deal with the problems? At Atmex, we take great pride in, in knowing we're going to make mistakes. And it's how we recover on those mistakes that really earns a customer for life. And how, how retailers are dealing with those challenges gives you a lot to know about the kind of company you're doing business with. Obviously, the websites and the clarity and the, and the FAQs and and how well they're transparent about how they do business is also helpful. I think it's very, very important you do your homework before you make that buy. Gold is now also available in digital form. But what is digital gold? And perhaps more importantly, what is it not? Digital metal is one of the most misunderstood products in the market today. I'll describe how our product works at One Gold, And I think that is generally how digital metals work at other leading firms like One Gold. So we're buying metal first and foremost. And then we sell that metal to our customers. We assign fractional ownership of the product that's sitting in the vault today. And then you're able to trade that whenever you like. You can, you can get in, you can get out within a moment's notice. But the most important thing is the metal's always there. It's under lock and key. It's fully insured. And consumers are protected knowing that that metal is there. In the past, unfortunately, there have been companies that don't have the physical metal. So you want to do your research. You want to make sure that uh, the metal's really there and what kind of confidence can the seller give you in knowing that that metal is there. In terms of what it's not, it's not a crypto product. One of the challenges behind crypto is typically there's not an intrinsic value in them. 
meaning there's nothing really of value backing the investment you're making. One of the things about digital gold is all the modern digital conveniences you expect are now available. When we built uh, One Gold, one of our goals was to make the process super easy. You can buy it, you can sell it, you can do things like link your bank account to allow funding of the transaction to be very seamless. You can then do redemption if you like. So you want to convert your digital asset into a physical one and have it shipped to your home? No problem. All right there on the user experience for the consumer. Or even in today's times, you're able to do things like uh, like uh, auto invest, where you can buy $5 in gold once a week, do it over 52 weeks. And at the end of the year, um, you're going to have your $5 times 52 and then whatever the value of gold did uh, in terms of up or down. So you can't do that in a physical world. Uh, where you're traditionally only shipping physical to a home. But I can do that when I'm owning physical in a vault and assigning ownership to the customer. So earlier we looked at premiums within physical gold. The premiums also exist within the digital gold space? You're getting very attractive pricing in a digital environment. Today, our premiums are a little higher than they were, mainly because we can't buy metal at the same pricing we could buy before. But even then, with that said, an ounce of silver runs 2% today. So you're going to spend basically 30 cents for an ounce of silver on digital gold, where if you go to my website and you want to buy a, di buy, buy a silver round, that's going to cost you 3 to $4 an ounce. So 30 cents for 3 to $4, you can see it's very attractive from a, uh, from a cost acquisition standpoint. And you know physical metal is always there. There's full insurance in place, so you can feel protected and confident that your metal is really there. If we've been on our guard about sellers of counterfeit gold, how do we go about ensuring that a seller of digital gold is also legitimate? A lot of times you find in digital offerings, the backing is they'll put a board out there with some really cool names, but the reality is who's actually financially backing the operation is questionable. So transparency is critical. The players behind it are very important. High liquidity is super critical, right? You want to be able to get in and get out on a moment's notice. So ease of use and having technology available to you at all times, very, very important. The ability to get redemption, so the ability to exchange for physical, we think, is super important. On the digital side, I believe it's even more important to build confidence that the metal's there, right? In our offering, you own title. It is your metal. We have insurance policies for you from the Lloyds of London. We have tier one vaulting partners that give attestation statements that the metal's physically there, which we make available to our customers at all time, right? We also make sure we always own the metal before we sell the metal at all times. We technically have a certain number of days to true the position. If we have a surge, we may have to take two to three days to, to procure the metal, but you need to know the metal's there at all times. Digital gold has been developed to provide an additional layer of flexibility for gold bullion investors. I ask Kenneth to summarize the benefits that these various forms of storage provide. Should you own gold? Do your research. Uh, it performs very well. We, we look at the data all the time, as you can imagine. It's performed great in tough economical times. It gives you a hedge uh, nationally in your portfolio. Uh, so first and foremost, I do believe there's a strong, strong argument for why owning gold or silver in your portfolio makes a lot of sense. The data doesn't lie. But now once you've decided you want to own metal, you know, do your research, figure out what's right for you. Should you own paper and go through your brokerage firm? It's an option, right? They charge an annual fee. Sometimes that's 30, 40, 50 basis points per year. You're going to find that in digital offerings, that uh, that annual fee is more like 12 basis points for a gold product. But there's a little bit higher premium on the front end, but it gives you far more capabilities than what you can do today with a uh, brokerage offering of, of, say, GLD. On the physical side, it really comes down to your comfort level of owning metal in your home. We do a significant amount of business there. We have over 1.7 million customers that are doing that. And we've had our best months in, uh, on record here in the last three to four months. So clearly, a, need, a demand for physical metal is high right now. Uh, premiums, I'm hopeful, are going to come back down. They're a little higher than they no normally are, but that's just because availability of physical metal has become a challenge. So precious metals ownership is the right thing. It's really about what form you should have and how much you should have. And then from there, do your research, pick the right players to partner with, whether it's Amex and One Gold or someone else in the industry. Uh, make sure you find someone you can trust uh, to take care of you through good and bad times. There's clearly an incredibly powerful investment thesis for gold today, and everybody should investigate the opportunity. Many investors have already gained exposure, and these investors have varying degrees of wealth and requirement. The physical and digital markets have therefore developed over time to provide incredible variety to cater for a wide range of tastes, 
and needs within this space. Thus, Kenneth makes clear, do your due diligence. If now is the time to invest in gold, then now is the time to investigate the variety of physical opportunities on offer, and it's also the time to look at the flexibility that digital gold can also provide to all investors.